conversation um, is there with sort of the, the current young cornerbacks on the team when you look at that as a position that might have some departures um, this offseason? Yeah, in, in conversations, it's, you know, you're first off, you're, you're one or two snaps away from being in the game and, and being a starter full time. And then secondly, uh, you know, your, 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 your time is now. I mean, you have to start having that mentality. You can't wait until guys leave the program. I mean, you've got to have the approach that, you know, I'm here right now because you might be out there in the second play of the game or, uh, or not. But either way, at some point, the, the, the passing the torch is going to be to you. And so now you're no longer a freshman. You're no longer a younger guy. You have to become veteran and play veteran and, and start to show leadership and, and understand that, you know, you're going to be the guy. And it, there, there's a lot that goes with that. You know, there's, there's a much different approach with that. There's very much more uh, urgency about you and much more mature. And then going off that, um, Cam Brown is someone who you guys relied upon in the second half of last game. He's someone who was injured last year, came in as a wide receiver. What have you seen in the past year from him to, to get him to this point where he's the first cornerback off the bench for you all? A tremendous amount of growth. Uh, I think Jeff Halfley and, and our guys, and, and it's not just Jeff, it's everybody in the program. It's Mick and the strength and conditioning. It's uh, Ryan Stamper, it's everybody involved, you know, as you're bringing guys along. And I think Cam would tell you that, you know, maybe uh, six or seven months ago, he wasn't ready for this. And, uh, but he's matured into uh, a really good young man who's taking care of you know, all of his business off the field, in the classroom, and now on the field. And that, that's typically what happens, is that when you really start to take care of what's going on up in the classroom, you're doing a good job off the field. You know, you start to make plays, and you start to become reliable and play with discipline as well. So, uh, really impressed with, with how far he's come. And uh, the good news with him, he's got a high ceiling. He's got a long way to go. All right, next door, Dan. Ryan, you were asked about Demario. I know, I think he's a guy that a lot of people thought would play more this year than he has. Jalen Gill, kind of in the same boat. Just both of those guys. Where do you see them in terms of where they're at right now, and what do they need to do to earn roles in the offense? Well, you know, DeMario's had these kind of nagging injuries back and forth, and, um, you know, he's had some different return opportunities, and he's going to keep getting opportunities, and he has to make the best of those opportunities. Uh, and and Jalen, you know, still working to, to fight to the depth chart. You, obviously, the HVAC was a really big position here uh, during your Myers tenure at Ohio State. You guys have mostly used KJ Hill as more of a traditional slot receiver in that role. As you look forward to the future of this program, do you want to have that Curtis Samuel type of H-back in this offense, or are you looking more for those traditional slot receivers? Uh, I, I think it, it just, you're looking for best available, and then it's your job as a coach to figure out what they do best. You know, I think K.J. Hill is a very different uh, player than, than Paris Campbell, and uh, Paris is different than uh, Curtis Samuel, and they're all different than, you know, the last guy. And so uh, you try to look for somebody, you know, who has a real high-end skill set, whatever that is, working in short areas. Um, and then you kind of go from there. And one of the things going into the season for us was that, you know, we felt like our, our 12 package was stronger this year. And so that H position has been supplemented a little bit with a second tight end. And I think that's been good for us. Um, so again, it's, you know, you, you try to recruit the best available, the best <coughs> players possible, and then you try to go adapt the offense based on that. Second row middle, Bruce. Uh, you play Northwestern and they're one of the worst offensive teams in the country. Wisconsin plays Illinois. Uh, looks like pretty much a layup W. How do you keep your guys' minds off two weeks as opposed to Friday night? Yeah, the same thing that, that we've been talking about all along, um, which is, you know, all you're worried about is this game right here. And we, we all know what happens if you start to lose focus, and we cannot do that. Um, so this week we've talked about having a white belt mentality, which is, um, you know, a mentality that you're starting right from scratch and that you don't take anything for granted, you don't make any assumptions. And, and if we do that, then we'll be fine. If we start to look ahead or start to let our egos get in the way, that's when we get in trouble. Did you watch Wisconsin Saturday? Uh, I saw them on TV, yes. What can you gain from watching a team on television as opposed to scouting them like you scout them as a coach? Yeah, I mean, you just kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, going through the channels and there was a lot of great games on TV and it was great to get a day off and rest and be with the family. Uh, my son had a football game, so we went to that, and we got home and watched TV as a family and watched a bunch of the games. But just going back and forth, and uh, you really can't get much from it. You just kind of watch the games and try to be a fan for an afternoon. Last one on call and plays. Is it, I don't know what the right term is, more fun, easier, different calling plays for this offense as opposed to calling it for last year's offense? And if you could go through the differences from your perspective. Uh, no, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, um, you know, one's more fun than the other. I, I just think that the, they're very different. Um, you think about the two different offenses and where we're at with it. Uh, but 
very different people. Um, you know, and, you know, I think we're you know seven or eight guys different in that in the, in the, the mix of guys, and some of our younger guys have grown up. So, no, I, I think it's it's the same thing. You try to prepare the best you can. You do the best you can about getting first and second down calls ready to go. Do a great job on third down, the red zone, and, and, and then in the goal line, have some situational stuff. Two minutes ready to go, and it's all about the work that we're putting in now during the week to make sure that those calls are ready to go. And then once they're on the call sheet, everybody gets behind them, and then we, we got to go to work about uh, installing them, and then the guys own it. And then once it's once it's ready to go and it's on the call sheet for a game, then you just got to call it and, and trust it. Uh, second row right, Tony.